Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this second video on Moto 14.2's particle item map, I'm going to create a rig that allows me to control which of these sci-fi floor panels appear in what order along this procedural curve. So right now, if I take this locator right here, and I'll, I'll break down this rig in a second, but if I move this locator, I'm gonna get more floor panels generated. And you can see that they are randomly, these panels are randomly placed along this curve, which is typical behavior for a motor replicator. In fact, if I look at my curve here, I can turn on this little clone mesh operation at the end and clone it to the left. You can see this, they're just randomly placed there. If I look at my mesh operation stack, you'll see there's two different mesh operations that are turned off right now. One is called set weight. Now this came in Moto 14.1, and this creates a procedural weight map on my curve. The next one is called remap weight. Now this is new in Moto 14.2, and this will take a weight map and it will remap it either into a weight container, another weight map, or a particle item map. And so in this case, I'm going to remap those weight values into particle item values, which the replicator will then read to place the prototypes where they should belong. So if I turn this on, all of a sudden it's in order. I have those guys here at the, at the start and in the middle, and then these guys. And no matter how you know, far out or close up I drag this, it always keeps that correct. So how does this work? Let's take a look at the rig. I'm just kind of push back in here. And to start, I'm going to hide my replicator there, and I'm just going to pop open the schematic. And in my curve, uh, I'm going to turn off some of these mesh operations here. I'll accept this bottom one called Create Polygons. And so let's take a look at this. We've got these two locators, one at the beginning here and one at the end. And I'm feeding those into a node called Locators to Array. You can just find it right in here in the Array nodes. And so you've got Locators to Array right there. And all that's doing is it's reading the positions of these locators and putting them into a list. And then feeding those positions or that list of positions into the position slot in the Create Polygons node, which is the first mesh operation on this curve mesh item. And what that'll do is it'll read the position of this first guy, put a point there, read the second position of the second locator, put a point there, and I am telling it to draw a curve in between them. After that, to get some more vertices on the curve, I'm going to add a curve rebuild mesh op. Now I'm gonna turn this on, and you'll see a bunch of points there. This curve rebuild mesh operation has a point count channel that allows you to determine the number of points in your curve, but I have that rigged up to the position of my locator. And here's how this works. So I turn my replicator back on. Let me turn off these verts there. Each of these floor panels is one meter in length. So for every meter I move out my locator, I want to add another point. And we do that with just a little bit of math. So I read my Z position, and right here my Z position is 7, so I'm getting a 7 fed into my floor math node. You can find that again just under the math nodes. Just type in math, and then math floor is in here somewhere. There's all kind of, there's a ceiling, which is going to round up to the nearest whole number on math floor which I have is going to round down to the nearest whole number. So here you see my locator B is at, we'll just move it to something slightly different. We'll move it to 7.15, but the floor node is going to take that 7.15 and it's gonna output seven. And then I'm gonna add one more digit onto that with this add node. So I'm just adding one. And so it's outputting eight and it's putting that into our curve rebuild point count. So I always have one extra point. So there's one at the beginning and one at the end. And as I drag this node out, you'll see these popping in and out as I approach another whole number. And so here my locator is, you know, just around four meters away. As I approach five, it's going to pop in another point there on the curve, which gives me another prototype from the replicator. So that's how that's set up. But I'm going to keep moving up and I'm going to add a weight map to my curve. And so I'm going to turn on uh, my linear fall off here so you can see it like that. So what this weight map is going to do is it's going to add a mat value of 100% along this entire curve, right? So all the vertices on this curve are going to get a weight map value of 100%. But I'm modulating that with this linear fall off. And the linear fall off has a range channel right here. And again, I'm just pulling that from the position of this locator. So right now the position of this locator has a 
value of about 7.13 on Z, and that's gonna feed directly into the range of our linear fall off. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us 100% on this first weight, and then it's gonna go all the way down to zero on this last weight right here. And so that's where I'm getting these vertex weight values from this set weight mesh operation and this ranged fall off, which is modulating them. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna remap it into a particle item map. So I'm reading in this weight map, and I just type in the name of it. So I called this one weight. You can see it over here, weight. And I'm going to remap it into a particle item map. I'm gonna call that P item. And I'm just going to have a linear value here. Now I can adjust this. In fact, if I turn on my replicators here and you see me adjust this little gradient here. In fact, let me just open it up into a, a large one. Right now, it's just a linear map. So a weight of one gets a particle item value of one. A weight of zero gets a particle item value of zero. But you can remap this however you want. See how I'm doing that? And the prototypes are changing. Well, let's keep it linear and predictable. Whoops, 100%. Right there. You can also do it with curves. So if I turn that back to a curve, I can, you know, do whatever I want with it. So there's a lot of control there. And that remapped weight is now in the particle item value on that curve. And what's happening is I'm feeding the curve into the replicator as a particle source. And I've got this group right here of the four panels being fed in as prototypes. And this replicator will look at the particle item weight, particle item weight of that curve, and it's gonna place these replicators along that weight. So the first two go to zero to about 0.25, and then 0.26 to 0.5, and you know, 0.51 to 0 0.74, 0 0.75, and 0.75 all the way into one. So that's how that works. And if I wanna clone these guys over once or twice or three times or whatever, in fact, let's just add one more for the heck of it. That clone is picking up those weight values as well, because the weight values are happening first, and then the clone is happening after that. So that's how that's working. And so it's just a really simple rig where I can adjust the length of this curve here. But I have a really predictable situation with my prototypes. And again, I can just rearrange these if I want to in the tree here. So if I want the purple one in the second position, I just move it down here in the second position. So there's all kinds of applications for this. And it's a really interesting and uh, a fun new feature in Moto 14.2. And I hope they expand upon it because I can really see myself using this. Yum, yum!